Join us for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Coogan Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn... You get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up. Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm delighted to be joined by my bro, my mate, Gary Cully. Gary, it's, uh, I didn't get a chance to speak to you when I was out in Dublin too much, man, because it was you were strictly down to business. But it does seem like a while since I've spoke to you, man. What's been going on? How's life? Yeah, it's been a while, all right. Um, Dublin show has been a while. I've been uh, I've been away a little bit. I've been getting my head right and and dealing with uh, dealing with the loss was first loss in my career, which was which was and and still is very difficult to. To get over, but I'm at a point now, Andy, where I'm in a good place and uh, I'm ready to get back on the horse and to make things right and to uh, to start making my charge again towards world titles and towards being where I know that my, my talent deserves to be. You know, so I'm excited, man. Definitely, like like I said to you there, I, I do obviously want to talk about the 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 the, the team up because you put on your Instagram was it yesterday that you you've teamed up with Joe Mack and Deco down yeah. in Liverpool, training alongside guys like. Beefy, Liam Smith and Cam Smith and Josh Taylor and all them guys. So I, I do want to talk about that, but just staying on that um, Jose Felix fight, um, obviously for me as a friend, it's hard for me to, 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 to watch when I know how good you are and, and it's hard for me to see that happen, if you know what I mean. And that's just that's just coming from a friend thing. As a journalist, I'm thinking, man, I, I want you to get that rematch immediately and put what's right because I know how good you are and how good you can be. Now, Going to the fight itself, how when 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 the first shot happened, I think it was a big shot that made your legs wobble. Did the, was it the inexperience of not taking the knee and trying to fight on? Was that do you think that that was a a big part of what caused the the onslaught and maybe the the second knockdown? You know, I think it was it was a big shot, and to be fair, my head was still there. I knew what was going on. I knew what was happening. I I was thinking to myself, the refs having a look here. Like you need to be. You need to get on your toes. You need to get moving, and I knew exactly what was happening. Um, but the legs weren't there, obviously, for for a little bit after getting hit the big shot. And there was a point then in the fight after when after the first shot, when my legs came back and I went right. I'm here now. I'm back, and that's that. Uh, that switch came back on, Andy. But I went. I should have went this way and survived the rest of the round and got to the end of the round instead of, I said, right, this guy's after getting me now. I'm going to get him back. It's a 10-round fight. I didn't need to get him back immediately in round three. Look, I've lost the round already. I've been down. So let's just get on your bike, survive the round and, and get back to the corner and take some advice, get a, get a little slap, get a drink of water and, and wake the fuck up, really. But um, that was an experience on my part and... Probably a little bit of ego. This fella's after getting me in my hometown, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna get him back now. And just went fucking went at him, and and it was I think that was the problem. in what even got me caught the first time was I probably I was told a great piece of advice by a person before, and it was create the hype but never believe it. And I was probably a little bit guilty of believing my own hype, you know. Mm. Um, but- I was coming off five five mm. knockout wins in a row. Um, I was putting everybody away and. I knew if I if I caught Felix clean, I could put him away as well. But then mix that in with being in Dublin, and I kind of felt the first bell rang, and after thirty seconds, nearly there was a there was a dead silence in the place, waiting for me to waiting for me to perform, waiting for me to do something. And look, that's my fault. That's inexperience on my behalf, and uh, I've never been in that position before. One never fought in Dublin in front of my home crowd, and two had that sort of pressure. So. Um, I I believe I'm a high performance athlete, and there's no room for error at the at the top level. But on the night, I, I made an error, and and at such a high level in a sport, you only you don't get to make any more errors. You only get one error, and and that's the end of end of story. And that was the end of story for me on the night, like you know. But um, I think I think I've got more skills than Jose Felix. I think I'm I think I can beat him nine out of ten times, but. Um, I just got it wrong on the night, and there was a couple of things that, yeah, that I didn't get didn't get right. Got a little bit complacent, didn't mm-hmm. show him enough respect. That guy had, that guy had double the amount of knockouts that I had fights, you know. Mm. And I never even thought of that once. I was just thinking that I'm after putting the last five away, and I'm gonna put him away, and he's in my hometown. And I'm gonna walk right through him, and never thought about what was coming back, like you know. So, 
um, that's that's my fault and and for thinking that that I'm invincible, I guess, and I'm able to walk through these guys. But boxing's no joke. Them eight ounce gloves are small, and you get hit by somebody with them gloves on, especially a, a Mexican with thirty KOs, you're gonna feel it, like you know. And uh, just just an experience on my part that that uh, led to, led to what happened, I believe. But I'm better than that. It's a little bit disappointing for me because. The, only, the thing I'm disappointed about most is I, I was fighting in front of my home crowd for the first time. So loose tree arena, 10,000 people, the place mm. was full and they didn't get to see how good I am, you know, because you've seen me and a lot of others have seen me when I, when, I, when I get it right and when I'm on my day and I believe I'm one of the best in the world when I'm on my day and I get it right. And unfortunately, I didn't get it right on the night and, and it's a little bit disappointing that my home crowd didn't get to see how good I am. But look, it looks like I'm going to get the second chance at it. So uh, I'm excited about that and I'm ready to put it right. Good stuff. But what I will say is something that you can teach. You talked about your skill set and, and and people have seen how skillful you are when it comes to the, the, the fundamentals of boxing. And you mentioned your five fight knockout. So you can obviously pack a punch as well. But what is something you can't teach is a set of bollocks, mate, a set of balls. And the fact that even though you were getting clipped and you were hurt badly, you were still trying to fight. Now, for me, that shows the fighting Irishman in you. That you even though you were hurt and the legs went there and you still want to keep on swinging, um, and that's something you can't teach is a big set of balls. And again, you've proved that sort of aspect of your game as well. Something that annoyed me a little bit, Andy, in the, in the weeks after was I'm seeing everywhere, Cully knocked out, knocked out, knocked out. I wasn't knocked out. The referee stopped me. I didn't even stop myself. I would, I, I'd still be there now, mm. taking on Holyfield. I was ready to go. You know what I mean? Um, obviously the referee made the right call. I'm not saying the referee didn't make the right call, but I wasn't knocked out. I was stopped by the referee. I was, I was ready to go. I was standing there, and I'd still be standing there now, like I said. But I do, I do genuinely believe. I know when I got caught the first shot, there was a lot of time left in the round, but. I do still genuinely believe if I got to the end of the round and I seen the bell out and I got a minute back in my corner, I got a bit of water, I got a smack in the face, I, w- I was fine for the next round, you know what I mean? I do believe that, but look, it is what it is. Um, I got it wrong and referee's call was right. But listen, I, like you said, fighting Irish, I'm, I was, again, seeing people who were, it's coming from a good place who are worried and, and is he okay and is he going to fight again and stuff. This this is happening to me in my whole life. Like I'm boxing my whole life. I get hit a shot. I get hit a shot. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Um, it's not. It's not much of a. It wasn't much of a big deal to me, really. Obviously, the loss was was a big deal. Taking my first loss, but I get hit shots all the time, and just because people hadn't seen it before, I guess, and it's a little bit worrying when when you see a, somebody take a few shots, I guess. But I made a tough stuff, Andy. I made a tough stuff, and I, like I said, I'd still be there now fighting Hosley Felix. So, and I've um, got no doubt about that, Gary. To be honest, um, after the fight, I spoke to Eddie Hearn, and Eddie Hearn mentioned the weight. Maybe, maybe it was time for you to, maybe it was time for you to maybe move up to one forty. Um, can, can 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 you elaborate on that? What is is one thirty five still okay for you to make, or is it time to maybe step up to one forty? I've seen a few comments on that myself, and obviously in the weeks past the fight and stuff, and. 135 is fine for me, Andy. Genuinely. Mm. Genuinely. I don't... Uh, I've, I've been around boxing a long time and I've seen people struggle to make weight and I didn't really struggle. I follow a process. I, I, do, a, I do a water load and, and I, I do a weight cup. But I'm taking off six pounds the night before a fight. Like, I know lads who do 16 pounds the night before a fight. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's not a... It's not a massive strain on my body, I don't believe. I believe I did get, I don't think it's losing the weight. It's how you rehydrate after your weight is, is what really tells. Um, and I made I made a couple of mistakes, I believe, in the rehydration. Um, I didn't rehydrate how I should have and how I usually do and didn't feel as good on fight day as I usually do. Um, but again, that's all part of the process. And like I said, when you're, when you're operating at, at a high level like that, you can't get these things wrong. Mm-hmm. And uh, I made a couple of mistakes, yeah, in my rehydration. Not in my not in my weight cut, weight cut all went to plan, but in my rehydration, um, felt a little bit off, probably ate the wrong foods, got sick the night before the fight, so I knew straight away when I got sick that was this was 10 o'clock on, on the Friday evening, the rehydration wasn't going to plan, like, you know, so that was in my head too. And yeah, like, like I said, 
there was there was a couple of little mistakes there that you can't afford to make. But I, I still believe I can make one three five quite easily. And look, if if it if it comes a point where I can't, I'll be the first one to say it because we don't only have to make weights, we have to perform at them weights. And obviously I didn't perform on the night, but that was at 137 or 138 pounds even, where I'd made 135 to fight Wilfredo Flores just a couple of months previous and everybody was raving about how big and strong I was at the weight. You know, so it's a... Uh, sport, isn't it? It's a fickle old sport, boxing, man. Exactly, exactly. You're, you're only as good as your last performance, they say. So look, if when, when you lose or when it doesn't go right, everybody knows why it didn't go right. But when you win, you don't look at these things and everything's great. So, mm. uh, yeah, no, no, I think I can still make £135. If the, if if look where I am now, who where I'm based now, it's all it's all based on numbers. It's all based on science. And if if I go into the gym or into the lab and I'm told you've got too much body fat, or you've got you've got too much muscle mass that we can't actually physically make 135 pounds safely anymore, then then it's time to move up. But right now, I feel good at it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, obviously, that was just something that Eddie Hearn had mentioned to my my post fight interview with with him uh, after after the the show. And um, but I do want to. You mentioned obviously, it looks like you're going to get a chance to fight in Dublin again. Is the immediate rematch for Jose Felix? Is that on your mind? Is that something what you want going into the uh, the next Dublin show, maybe in November? Yeah, well, it it's something that from from the twenty first of May, that's all that's been on my mind mm. was. I need to I need to rematch Jose Felix and I need to get this right. But of of obviously which we're gonna speak about, I've obviously had a couple of changes in uh, team and in camp and stuff like that. So um now it's down to gelling with a new team and gelling with a new coach and seeing where we're at and seeing if that is the right fight to take next. I still want that fight. Um but let's see going I'm literally first two weeks with a new team so let's see moving forward how we gel how quick we gel how sparring starts going when we start sparring when we start camp and uh, it's definitely a, an itch that I have to scratch in the next while for sure Um, it's one that I won't be able to even even getting back on the horse and getting back to winning ways I believe it's uh, it's one that that I definitely need to to revisit before before time yeah, for sure for sure not before I retire in the in the in the next next while yeah for sure definitely well let's talk about then um you mentioned a new team and teaming up with uh joe mack if people don't follow you on instagram they haven't seen you on what you uh your post on twitter and whatnot um you've teamed up with joe mcnally and uh deco o'rourke in in liverpool at the rotunda training alongside guys like cam smith liam smith i think josh taylor's coming back to the gym next week aston brown next week keeping a jargo uh, thomas hart jj metcalf I mean, if I've missed somebody else, young Frankie Stringer. I mean, if I've missed somebody out, I apologise. But I mean, big gorilla Darren Till. Oh, big Darren Till, big big. Oh, how can I forget Darren Till? Big Darren T. I forget Darren. Yeah, I mean, listen, you've got a gym there full of champions, and uh, obviously you had a great setup out in Dublin and 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 Nace, where you're from, with the uh, with with Peter and all that. So obviously, the reasoning behind the 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 transition. Can you elaborate on that? Can you go into it, or do you just want to keep it to yourself just now? Yeah, like I, I just, just felt like I needed a challenge. Like you said, I had a great setup in Nason nice in Dublin, but probably a little bit too good of a setup in the way that it was a little bit too comfortable for me. Mm. Everything was set up around me, and the both gyms. I worked out with two gyms, but both gyms were ten minutes from me, and it was just very much getting up in the morning, and it was very very comfortable. Um, another reason I was, I, I I've been in the last since since the couple of good performances since I've signed at Matchroom and the profile has grown a little bit and I've been chasing world titles and stuff and I've been the superstar in the gym kind of and I've been the, the big fish I guess in the small pond Ireland's a very small country let alone Dublin or, or Kildare like you know so mm. I've been the, the big fish in the small pond and didn't really have anybody to to look up to as a role model myself like you know I was the role model for the young kids in the gym and nice and you and a tree where I train and um. I wanted somebody that I could look up to that's been there, that's done it. I was on the treadmill yesterday just, just doing a, a sprint session with Callum, but Callum's fighting next month to become two-time undisputed, like, you know. Beefy's in the gym just just warming up beside Beefy, and he's been there and done it, like, you know. He's fighting Chris Eubank soon, and 
and people are involved in, in massive fights and they're at the top of the sport and they're where I want to be. So it was just something to look up to and something to give me something to chase, I think, mm. that I needed. And then thinking about different gyms and coming over to, to Liverpool, it actually it made me really nervous and really scared because I was so comfortable back at home over the last couple of years. Like I said, I'm, I'm with Niall since I'm 10 years old. I'm with Pete the last five years and it was very, very comfortable for me. So when I started thinking about moving, it made me uncomfortable and even thinking about it made me scared. So I kind of thought, right, well, that's probably a reason in, into why I should do it then. If it's if it's going to make you scared, it's going to make you grow. So, mm. uh, yeah, decided to, to relocate. Liverpool won because Joe's being over here and or Joe's over here and, and the lads are based over here and it's such a big, such a... Uh, such an experienced day, but with with so many so many good fighters and world level fighters in it, and then being in Liverpool, I've been over and back to Liverpool for my whole life. Like I I support Liverpool as I think most people know, and uh, I've been travelling to and from here since I've been five years old, so I'm quite familiar with the city. And there's a big Irish contingent over here. Um, Liverpool basically is Irish, like you know what I mean. It feels like it's Dublin, and and they've taken me in like one of their own, so feel really comfortable here when I first left the gym the first week I went over to meet Joe and left the gym I, f- I left and I was thinking I feel like I've been here before like you know the lads just took me in like like I've been there my whole life so um, settled in straight away and, and the lads are all deadly so yeah man I'm excited up for the next few months Joe and Decker obviously they're the real deal Um, once I met Joe and started chatting to him about boxing and and uh what what we could possibly plan and possibly do and my style and all these kinds of things it, it just made sense for me to do it um i've got a short career i've got three four five years left whatever it may be but um i want to get the most out of it so i'm going to give it everything to to get the most out of it. i believe i can win world titles and i can be at the top level so i want to do everything in my power to make sure that i do that and i'm sure you will Gary, now obviously you, you you spent a little bit of time. I don't know how many weeks and uh, three four weeks, whatever it may be, with with Joe and Deco. How's it been? How's obviously the training sessions been? I've done a a, a circuit training with Deco, and uh, it's probably one of the worst things I've ever done in my life, man. I know you're fit as a fiddle, Gary. So how's the training sessions been? And you mentioned training alongside Cam Smith and Beefy and all these guys, but for you personally, in that rotunda gym, which is a historic gym and it's a massive gym, it's a big gym. How's the training sessions been? How's it been so far with you? Training's been brilliant. I went like the the boxing side of things. The first week I went in, I felt like I was starting all over again because I was just learning not a new style, but just learning different things. And if I'm doing something on the pads, and Joe just asked me why, why are you doing that? Not not in a bat, just making you think. Why are you doing that? Why are you making this movement? What about this movement? Just making me think. And I'm a boxing fan, and I'm into I'm into boxing technique, and I'm into studying boxing. So. When when Joe started talking to me and asking me questions and making me think, I just felt like I started all over again when I, when I first originally got here. And it's only been three weeks. I did two weeks. I went on a little holiday and made my decision, and then I come back over this week. So it's still pretty new, but we're gelling quite well. Um, Joe's switched on. Joe knows the game inside out, and uh, he studies it really well. So yeah, I'm excited by that. And then the the other side of the things as in there our running sessions and our strength sessions. Um Declan's no joke on them on them treadmill sessions. I was on the treadmill with Callum yesterday and uh it's no joke. It's no joke on Mondays is green zone so you're okay and then your other two days of running um it's no joke. But look, I'm I'm good on the treadmill as well. So I've I've been I've been into the running the last couple of years and I'm quite good as most people know as well. But when I come over here Callum's on the treadmill beside me and I know I'm looking up to Callum to be as to to get to where he is and to do the things he's done but I'm trying to push him I'm trying to run harder than him and tell him to up his treadmill that he can go as fast as I can go on the treadmill and we've only got a minute left let's go you can hold and I'm trying to bring the gym to new levels as well you know what I mean I'm trying to get here and I can learn so much boxing boxing technique and boxing ability and all this kind of stuff from Joe and from Callum and from Beefy and all these guys, but I'm quite fit and I'm good on the treadmill, so I believe I have a job over here to to lift the level of the gym as well, you know, and to to push the guys as hard as I can as well, and and really make myself part of the team and and be a positive influence on them as well, like you know. So, um, 
yeah, man, I'm settling in well. Like I said, I'm settling in well, and it's uh, the lads are all the lads are all class, and I'm I'm looking forward to the next few months. Hey, listen, it, it, I've been like I said to you, I've spent time in the gym. I've I've been. I've spotted beef and he's knocked me the fuck out as well in that gym. So I listen, only seen the video today, to be honest. Oh, no, listen, Again, it's, seen it before, it's but... one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life, to be honest with you. But listen, uh, it's funny you said that that Joe McNally basically broke it down and said like you felt like you were starting over because Kevin Ajago said that to me when I, I spoke to him when he went to Joe. He basically said it felt like it was a new it was a school days type thing. I don't want to quote word for word what what Kevin actually said, but he basically said the same as you. It was like you went in there and it was almost like. Oh, I'm starting again, and it's like a, a, a refresher course, or even it's like a, a school day. I think he said was the way he described it. And it, do you know what, Andy? It's not even like a coaching style that this is wrong and this is wrong, and you're doing this wrong. It's just asking a question: Why did you move to that side? Why Why are you slipping and not rolling? Why are you doing this? So it's it's getting you thinking as to why why you actually are doing it. And he's not not yet not necessarily saying anything's wrong with the movement but if you are doing it explain why you're doing it you, have, you should be able to explain why like you know so mm. it just gets you thinking and yeah it's like a it's like a whole new start a whole new fresh start so that's what I'm excited about you know I'm, I'm over here I got I probably got a little bit too comfortable a little bit complacent back home cre- crept in and uh, you know I'm, I'm I'm over here and I'm, I'm ready to start it over so good. it's exciting good and I'm excited as well because I'm going to take a wee visit down to the gym in the next Couple few weeks, I think I'm going to message Joe and, and ask to come down. So I'll I'll, I'll see you down there because obviously, I mean, looking at the weights, you'll be you you should be sparring young Frankie Stringer. You'll probably spar Josh. Are you? You no no you yeah. Listen, I've learned my lesson, man. If you step in with a pro, man, just be prepared to get hurt. And it was <laughs> I was I was prepared. But listen, I'll, I'll give you a spar. Just we're not filming it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like it, to it's going to be an absolutely great experience for you. I'm happy for you, Gary. Good to see you smiling again. I was gutted when I couldn't see you after the fight, obviously. Um, and I didn't get to see you much fight week, um, which was which was obviously you were zoned in. So I'm happy to see you with a smile on your face. You're, you're back to it. And listen, like you said, you want to get to the top, and I've no doubt you'll get to the top, mate. Obviously, a little blip in the road, and it seems like you've took this loss as a lesson, like most people say. So that's the main thing. Yeah, I've learned more from this loss, Andy, than I have in the 16 wins combined. So um, I can only look at it as a positive now. Obviously, it put me back a couple of months and it's, it was a hard lesson to learn, but I've learned a lot from it. It spurred me to to make a change, to get over here. And uh, yeah, I'm happy. I'm in a good place, man. I'm in a good place. So like I said, and I keep saying, I'm, I'm very excited for the next couple of months. Definitely, Gary. Like I said, I'm not gonna make. I'll probably make a gym visit in the next couple of weeks, so I'll see see you the next two or three weeks or whatever, mate. But listen, as soon as that fight news drops as well, I'll give you a message. But like I said, I'll see you in a couple of weeks, mate. So thanks so much for doing this for me, mate. Appreciate your time as always, pal. My pleasure, Gary. Speak to you soon, brother. Enjoy your dinner, man. Good I will do, mate. Big juicy steak. Cheers, okay. Gary. <laughs> Join us for the very first IFL live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the thirteenth, with me, Coop and Cassius and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn, you get up, you dress up, and you fucking shell up.